That's what really should happen in the rhythm section. Now, when we go to the electronic instruments, when we're doing more of a rock thing or something, I guess we should do that. Let, let's uh, change to your solid body guitar and your electric bass and just demonstrate a little bit with those things. <laughs> and it's typical, maybe not typical in a high school situation for your guitarist to own more than one guitar, but hopefully it's possible. And it might even be possible, I've mentioned this before for the horns, where uh, I might have jazz saxophone mouthpieces that kids can check out. I might have small bore trombones that the kids can check out if they're in the jazz band. I might also have two different kinds of guitars that can be checked. <laughs> I might have the solid body and the hollow body guitar. And then if one's got one or the other, you got the opposite if you need it. You know? um, unless they're serious about jazz and really serious, Pretty unlikely they'll have a hollow body. Almost everybody's going to have the solid body, so at least if the sure. school owned the hollow this body. Works. Hollow bodies tend to be more expensive. I mean, yeah. And they, if it's fully hollow, it's usually not quite as versatile. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and it's not uncommon in your high school band for your bass player to be an, an electric player. That's not really the right sound for your swing stuff. Ideally, your swing stuff is the acoustic bass, and your swing ballad really should be the acoustic bass. When, he, when we move to some Latin things, it could either be acoustic or electric on a lot of Latin things. The electric is very good on a lot of Latin things. The electric is almost mandatory on the rock and funk things that you need to have a different instrument to have the right sound. You know? <laughs> To do what he's going to do right now, uh, acoustic bass is pretty difficult to pull off the same sound. <laughs> One thing is too with hollow body, you probably sound with electric bass too. You'll have to be more careful with feedback. Uh, uh huh. There, if you turn up very much, uh, it can feedback pretty easily, especially if they face the amp. It's going to feedback. So you need to just mess around with placement if you're getting feedback. Maybe that's a really good point. The feedback can be an issue. So that's why some people, if they are, even if they mostly play hollow bodies, they might do a solid body sometimes when they have to get really loud. Yeah. Yeah. Or semi hollow. Okay. So I guess we can just keep a blues format and just turn it into funk, whatever you want to do. <laughs> And, of course, we may go to the electric keyboard as well. I would prefer the acoustic piano on a swing thing. It gets to be a problem for the players to hear how loud they are. You really have to give them some feedback on this. And I would want my players to sit in front of their amp as much as possible so they can hear what's coming out of the amp as opposed to being behind the amp where they don't know what they're doing sometimes. It's really difficult to, to get the balances. If I'm sound checking before a concert, I always sound check the acoustic instruments first, but then we always do something where we can sound check the electric instruments as well, because it's going to be a different thing. Yeah. Why don't you call something, Dan? Or, or uh, just do you set. want us to play like a tune or play like a... You can just be in the blues or whatever too. Or Let's do... Uh, yeah. Sunny <laughs> room for two. Okay. There's a lot of different kinds of funk. <laughs> so we need to actually set up some parameters here. <laughs> Uh, let, let's do. Let's demonstrate first what we call kind of a halftime shuffle, uh, or ha halftime, uh, yeah, almost like a pretty shuffle, where it's got a. Uh, a lot of rock tunes are at the halftime or the standard time are straight eighths, but at the sixteenth level, they're a little they're swung. We were reading something in synthesis last time where the saxes were playing. Ba -da, da 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 And it's like, no, no, I don't think that's working. The rhythm section's playing straight, though. Yeah, rhythm section's playing straight, and you're going, but get it, go, go, get off. Where we're swinging the, the eighth note feel, or the sixteenth note feel, I mean. <laughs> so let's do it. So it's swinging at the double time and it's straight at the half time, all right? One, two, three, and. Thank you. 
good for a minute yeah and you know in the second chorus Dan switched to what we call slap and pop why don't you demonstrate it by yourself a little bit yes. yeah and I love the percussiveness of that you know mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> Yeah, uh, and Dan, of course, took on a more active role as a comper on this, appropriately, I think. Uh, he was doing a lot of 16th bass stuff. The piano, though, we, uh, I'm not sure what you were doing because we couldn't hear you at all. We need to get you up a little bit more. It was right next to us. So yeah. Right here, it sounds super loud. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Couldn't really tell what you were doing. But I believe you were playing a little bit more longer note things. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was just doing hits. Like that, and then on the second course, I just switched to yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, I was trying to get out of his way, <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's do another fill. Uh, what's another one you'd like to do? Mm -hmm. Let's do a really slow, like straight, even 16th. <laughs> okay. Wait, turn it off, turn it off. One, two, three. Let's just do a couple of Latin fills real quick. Just do, just, just do a bossa nova. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it could go either way there on the keyboard. It could go either way on the guitar too. The guitar could be the hollow body with no problem on this. But uh, we'll stay on what we're on. Okay. Do you know it? Yeah, okay. Girl from Epanema. What you're listening for in the bass is gong, ga gong, ga gong, dot a quarter eight type rhythms, straight eight notes in the drums and the uh, and the comping and stuff. All right, try it. Two, have yeah, you got it? Yep. Two and one. different chords there. Yeah, that's enough. Okay. Let's do the same thing, but let's do it as a samba. And a samba is basically like a double time of the boss anyway. But it's based on just half notes. And it can be bong, G7. G7. Yeah, G7 sharp 11. One, two, three. One, two, three, and...
there's a lot of a lot that you could know about this stuff. There are so many different styles and feel. Can you do a bender? Yeah. It's like a 12 8, yeah, triple feel. All right. One, two, three, and. It's not quite the right feel. This would be like Shaker Age. You know, and. Uh, Let's try it one more time. It's, it's what's happening on the bass that isn't quite working. Uh, yeah, don't try to do the double time. Don't try to do the time. Just do the triple 12 8 kind of. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah. You're not sure what to do with the band. Uh, it, it, isn't, uh, it isn't like the. Uh, uh, what were you doing a second? Goodbye, sir. Yeah, it's not like that. Uh, yeah, it's a gong gong tickle gong 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 tickle gong 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 tickle gong kind of stuff. Right. The, the higher notes kind of weird. Gong 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 gong. I go to the lower note. Gong 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 Ready? Go. You're thinking double time on the changes. Just go. Just we're not double time on the changes. All right. Two, three, and go. go, go, go. You should listen to, yeah. to, to a bembe. <laughs> uh, there are a lot of different, there are so many of these, it's unbelievable, real, really. Um, by the time you take care of all the Caribbean and the Cuban stuff, and then all the Brazilian stuff, and, uh, and, and there's all, a lot of other stuff too. It's just, it's a, I mean, I don't, the only guy I know that really knows all that stuff is Jay Lawrence. I mean, and Ron Bruff knew a lot of it too. I mean, they, they pretty much both were amazing at that. So playing with them all the time, we got into a lot of those fields. But how do you get into that stuff if, if you don't, if you're not a rhythm section player, and you're directing a band and they got to do this kind of stuff. How are you going to figure out what to tell them? Listen, yeah. Listen to it a lot. Exactly. You have to listen. And mm -hmm. what are you going to, how are you going to listen? I'm going to sit there and say, what is the bass? What is the rhythms the bass is doing? What kind of melodic stuff is the bass doing? How's the bass making that happen? And I would say, okay, what is he doing on the bass drum? Listen to that just only for a minute. You know, what's he doing on the snare drum? Okay, what's he doing on the cymbals? What's on the hi-hat? You know, and you have to listen to each part of that. What's the piano player? What kind of rhythms is the piano? What kind of rhythms is the guitar player? You, you, what's the extra percussionist doing? You have to listen to all that kind of stuff. There's only, I mean, there's just too much of it. Yeah. Uh, another thing I thought of was to go and talk to, talk to who you know. Yeah. 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 Those talk to who you know. And bring those people into your school and have them work with your group. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Use your resources. Because <laughs> there's no, I mean, I don't think any of us can know all of that stuff. There's so much of it. It's unbelievable. Uh, <clears throat> there's another issue that we didn't get to at all today. Maybe we'll spend this little bit of time with it next time, which is what kind of voicings are the piano and the, and the guitar are using? Uh, what kind of notes are they choosing to play? Because they're mostly looking at just chord symbols. How do I decide what I play out of that? Can we do something just for real fast? Just demonstrate playing really vanilla voicing. Uh, just play, just almost tri triad type stuff, you know. This is, I hear this a lot when I go out to schools, it's almost all, I, I corrected this several times this last week. All right, one, two, three, and. Getting into it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> didn't start out that way. It's like, I can't simplify that much. <laughs> but yeah, I hear this kind of comping out in the, in the schools a lot, and it's you don't want that triadic level. The rule of mo modern voicings is that every voicing has to have a rub. There has to be dissonance in every voice. Dissonance, even in the, even in the resolution chord, there's dissonance. You know, so you have to have a rub in everything. And if you don't, then it's what I'd call vanilla voicings. I also call them junior prom voicings, <laughs> because in the back in the fifties, there was a, a an end of the sixties, there was a set of charts that were written for the schools, Art Diedrich, Rusty Diedrich, and and Len Osser, and some of these. And and on the on the front, it say stage band series, and it say. Uh, junior prom, uh, stage band chart, and junior's prom series, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they were like these really vanilla voicings like this, like, so I call them jun junior prom voices. <laughs> but the real, you know, in modern music, you gotta have chocolate, you know, and you gotta have mm -hmm. strawberry, and you gotta have all the good stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. You can't just have vanilla voicing. So it's it's not Bruce Hornsby, you know, it's, it's a whole different kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to stop, but uh, hopefully you got something out of this. And if you're reading the chapters that I gave you, there's a lot of good stuff in there about what we talked about today, and it makes sense now, I think. And there's also a lot of uh, stuff in the other chapters as soon as you get the book. I'm hoping it'll be here this week. I'll play by next time I see you, I may have it. But, uh, as soon as you get the book, there's a lot of resources. I pointed out in, in chapter 14, for example, a lot of books to deal with this stuff and also places to listen. And even there's a lot of stuff online now where you can go and actually get a tutorial on how does the rhythm section do a cha-cha. And there's a lot of stuff. Out there. I've given a lot of that stuff to you in the book. So yeah, you'll be able to feed yourself. The idea is that you, you need to be able to feed yourself after this. You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks to all this group. Let's